monthly workshop meeting for Upper Frederick Township Board of Supervisors, May 4th. Uh, please plan, stand and place the flag. What we do is to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
dash 30.E3C requiring owners of wells being replaced to, continue, to contribute $200 toward replacement. Add language to section 240-30 requirement recommendation from township professionals. Do I have a second? Go ahead. Comments. This was taken out correctly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I have one other question on the 90%. Uh, maybe Rick, I think you could answer that. Uh, regarding 90% 90, 90 of occupancy for, a, uh, for seven years. Is that uh, an industry standard? 90% of occupancy for, for how long the bond? The establishment of the bond, yes. I'm not certain on that off the top of my head, but I think that seems reasonable because that would give you coverage for a time period that would allow you to identify any issues that occur. Wonderful. Okay. I second the motion. Or the second the motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, then we can move on to the <coughs> presentation. Thank you. Okay. So at this time we have uh, spots teaching employee representatives here to uh, give a presentation uh, about the fire hydrant flow capacity report that they prepared for the township. So I'll turn it over to you guys. Hello, I am Sydney Jernigan, spots teacher for the FOI. Um, I'm standing here. Can't hear you. Oh, do you want to, do you want to wipe them? Supervisor, she, her name's also on the project, but I'm standing in for her today. Um, Dan Stanton, I'm with Spot Stevens and work with Sydney and Jamie. Jamie couldn't make it due to a personal uh, conflict, and unfortunately, she couldn't come. So, what we're going to give here is the results from a study that we performed on uh, hydraulic capacities of the Perkins and Crossman uh, development. We were asked by Upper Frederick Township to evaluate the system in the Perkiomo Crossing development. Um, we partnered with Hershey Engineering to run a hydraulic model um, to help with that evaluation. Um, currently, there's 508 a population of 508 people of the cross of the development, um, 330 housing units, um, and. I'm trying to skip ahead to the hydrant system. Um, currently, there's two groundwater wells serving the development, um, 116,700 gallon um, storage tank, and two water supply pumps that are rated for 250 gallons per minute. Um, I believe the system was designed to run off of 16 or use 16 fire hydrants. Um, currently, there's two that are not in use. Um, the distribution system is mainly 8-inch water main piping throughout, uh, and the current average daily water production is 47,850 gallons per day to serve the system. Go back to that, sorry. Oh, yeah, can you, can you, can you mention the last one? So, the system was designed to provide hydrogen flows at 250 gallons a minute. That is what the design criteria of the existing system is. So at the lower portion, it actually goes well over 500 gallons a minute. But unfortunately, up at the upper end, the higher elevation of the system, it, it, it barely reaches 250 gallons a minute for a very short time period. So we just want to make sure you all are well aware of the existing conditions, basically. And the design parameters were, were that's how the developer designed it. That's how it was built. Can I ask a, are we allowed to ask questions? Sure. Please. Just quickly about the 250 gallon. You said that's what it was designed at the 250 gallons per minute. Did it have a flow, like a length of time for the flow? 
A 250 gallons per minute? All we found in, in the literature that we researched was 250 gallons a minute. It did not specify any <coughs> how long it should run. Correct. Okay. But from the tankage that is available, there's only a 2,500 gallon tank that supplies um, pressure to the system besides the booster pumps. And that tank is only 2,500 gallons a minute. Um, if you want to extrapolate that out, that's approximately 10 minutes worth of water. Yeah. Okay. At 250 gallons a minute. Anything else? So, and there's Sydney doing the flow test right there in, in the picture. So we were out in, what was it, November? No, and about mid-November, and we did, we flowed all the hydrants, or, or select hydrants, um, to, so we could get a baseline for the model that we ran, a computerized model that we run. So we came out, and we interrupted most of you all uh, throughout the day, flowing hydrants, and um, luckily, we, we got through all that, and then we went back and supplied the information to our partner, Hershey Engineering, who specializes in, in running hydraulic models, and he does a really good job. That's why we use him. So, throughout the system, you have a number of hydrants. We tested um, flowed hydrants 1, 3, 5, 7, 10, 13, and 14, and you can see our flow results right there if you all can see that. Um, it's, 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 can, you, can you see maybe one of those lights? Thanks, Rick. Right. Oh, I'm sure that's off. Thanks. Yeah, it's taking off. Can you turn? That's what Dennis is thinking. This year is my Everybody see it a little better now? So, hydrant number one, which is at the upper end of the system, actually flowed 400 gallons a minute for a very short time frame, and then the flow drops off. Hydrant three, we actually got 575 gallons a minute, and five was 530, and on down the line, number 14, at 875 gallons a minute, that's down at the very bottom um, near the water plant where the water plant's located is where that hydrant's at. So it makes sense. That's the lowest elevation in the system. So you're naturally going to get uh, better pressure and flow there. Um, but again, it only lasted for a short time frame. After a few minutes, you could watch the flow drop right off. So trying to be nice to you all and not take all of your water out of your houses, we, we cut the, the, the flow testing as short as possible. Uh, just so we can get the baseline data without interrupting everyone's water at their house. Is the flow testing you're doing similar to the flow testing that the township is doing twice a year? Is so it the same? Or they're, all the they're doing is flushing, I right? believe. Is that correct? Correct. So you're not actually putting a gauge on the correct. hydrant. We actually use it, it, that yellow thing we put on the hydrant does two things. It's called a diffuser, so it diffuses the water out so it doesn't cause a lot of damage to the ground around the hydrant. But there's also what's called a pitot gauge built into that so we could actually read how many gallons and what the pressure, how many gallons per minute the hydrant's flowing at and what the pressure is while it's flowing. That's the data you see here. So you can see the, the, how the uh, static pressure was 46 in the field, was 46 PSI. For some hydrants at the very low end of the system, it was 73. Once you started flowing um, in the field, you can see the pressure at the upper end dropped as low as 20, it's 13 psi at hydrogen three. So that's very, very low pressure, all things considered. 13 psi, you can basically stop with your hand. Okay, it's it's uh, not adequate. Baseline for DEP is 20 20 psi should be your minimum pressure. You have that static, but under high flow conditions, it doesn't quite meet the muster. So the model results came back. Um, we came up with different scenarios on how we could improve the pressure and flow within the system. So put in a, what's called a fire pump and a ground storage tank because you need to flow a large volume of water. 
national standards by, by fire code is 1,000 to 1,500 gallons a minute for two hours is code, okay? Um, that is code for this type of development. So we ran the model and we figured that you would need a certain amount of storage. So um, at 1,000 gallons a minute, you need um, about 120,000 gallons for fire storage and then you need to meet your domestic demand too, which is 67,000 gallons, which makes a total of 187,000 gallons is what you need on hand to be able to supply domestic and fire protection. Um, in doing that, you can put a ground storage tank down near where the water plant is, and then you will install, you could install a fire pump without doing any upgrades to the distribution system, but it's going to cause high pressure spikes when if and when that fire pump is required. So at a flow of <coughs> a thousand gallons a minute, um, you need 20 PSI, it's going to require, um, you can see over in the red, when you're running that fire pump, you have about 155 PSI if, if you were to flow 2,250 gallons a minute. That's a pretty high demand for um, more so than what you did. So we went above and beyond. We ran three different flow scenarios, 1,000, 1,500, and 2,250 gallons per minute. Those are pretty well standard. So these were, and then we also looked at it with distribution upgrades, which lowers the pressure because we're going to improve the flow through the tap through the um, development and actually install a 12 inch water main up through kind of the center of development. And that's going to allow more water at a lower pressure so the pumps are, you don't really need as big as a pump to be able to perform that. And that will, those were the scenarios we ran all these at the same scenarios of those flows. And then we also looked at installing a, an elevated tank, which you wouldn't need a fire pump then, but you're going to have an elevated tank about 100 to 140 foot up in the air. And that will supply all the pressure and flow that you could want or need um, at those 1,000, 1,500, gallons per minute. So with the elevated tank, we're still looking at the storage volumes all being the same. So at 1,000 gallons per minute, you would need 187,000 gallons of storage at 1,500 gallons a minute, which would really be the optimal. Um, you would need 247,000 gallons of water available to you at all times. When, if you wanted to go with 2,250 gallons per minute, you would need 337,000 gallons of water. Um, so that's a substantial amount of water, there's no doubt. And so, to have that much water on hand, the elevated storage tank is, is a really good option. But there's cost differences. Any questions on that information while we're there? Sure. You mentioned that this is required to meet the um, current code. When was the current code made effective? Because Mr. Sachs made a, a, a comment early, at our earlier meeting uh -huh. that when this was built, it met code standards. I don't, we didn't get real deep into when it was built. I don't know about that right now. But when did this new, when, when you reference to meet code, do you know when that code I believe the fire that? codes were, I, I believe the codes we were looking at was established in 2018, but it goes back as far as 2010 and 2014. I don't know what the code was when, it, when the development was. You're built. talking about the NFPA standard. That is correct. Yes, sir. So recommendations, just review the three options um, kind of, and went over those. So for the water system improvements, in order to meet the expected fire flows according to NFPA, um, the following outlines each scenario and our recommendations to reach those. So scenario one was the fire pump with no distribution system improvements. So that would require a new ground storage water tank to increase the capacity to what's needed for peak water usage with no distribution upgrades or upsizing of the pipes that are existing. In order to do this, you need a pump required to, to meet 1,500 gallons a minute of flow for a two hour time period, uh, considering the re required minimum is 180,000 gallons of water for that time, you would need that, at least that plus the 67,000 gallons which you use daily for um, to 
domestic consumption. That's a total of 247,000, and that would, would, would meet the 1,500 gallons a minute for the demand. So since the development has an existing storage tank with capacity of about 100,000 gallons, the new storage tank would really only need to be uh, built at 150,000 gallons, and you could then reach the 200, almost the <clears throat> scenario two is the same as scenario one, with the exception that we're going to upsize that water main right up through the middle of the development to a 12-inch water main. What this is going to do would be allow you to purchase a smaller fire pump and less horsepower, so it would be less demand on the electricity and, and horsepower demand for that, so it's going to be easier to maintain. And it's going to replace about 2,300 linear feet right up through the middle um, all on Valley Stream and Buck Road all the way up to Westview Drive. So, and that would allow you to, to flow more water at a lower pressure. So replacing this uh, would increase the demand of that pressure. Um, would also allow, as I said, for a small fire pump <clears throat> to maintain the 1,500 gallons a minute, you would need about 80 horsepower. If you wanted to go to the 2,250 gallons per minute, we'd need about 140 gallons of horsepower pump. And scenario three is the elevated tank. That's kind of a typical elevated tank, multi-layered tank. They have different styles. <clears throat> uh, the uh, multi-layered is probably one of the cheaper versions. That's why we showed that, and that's what we looked at. We did price out some of the others. Uh, uh, construction of that. Again, you would have to meet the, uh, the 250 gallons of storage, which includes the 67,000 gallons of water for domestic supply. Um, and that would mean a 250,000 gallon tank at 1,500 gallons a minute flow. If you want to go to 2,250 gallons per minute, you would require a 340,000 gallon tank. Because um, that does not include, because it's out in the distribution system. That would not include your existing tank. You would need the full amount for, for that. So under the scenario, the elevated tank could be installed in a wooded area on um, South Buck Road, just off of Pinot Drive, uh, which is the, what we modeled it at. And that would be up to the next one, the map. That's where the star is. That's a community. So where we put the star, is that spot that we, that's where we ran the model at. There's also some all, other alternatives that we looked at for location. The blue diamond right there was one that we looked at and that would be our second choice because of the elevation. You would need a little bit shorter tank which helps save on cost. And then the orange dots which are here and down in the, corner, in the upper right corner were all two other locations that we looked at but you would actually need a taller tank, which is the taller it goes, the more expensive there is to building it, right? So we kind of ruled those out, uh, but it is an option that we could easily include if that's a preferred location. Uh, but the star is kind of the best spot that we found elevation-wise and also spatial-wise. It's away, it's the furthest away from the most of the houses. The problem with the triangle is you're squeezing it into a lot of people's backyards. So we're trying to be cognizant 